Today's episode is sponsored by ourselves. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, one of the most important things about cocktails is their presentation. And your garnish game can really make or break that presentation. So Marius and I decided that we wanted to start making some dehydrated fruit to garnish cocktails. Not only are they beautiful to look at, they're pretty long lasting and they're functional garnishes in that they have aroma that you can add to your cocktail without unbalancing the cocktail, but just adding a little je ne sais quoi to it. So obviously we're doing limes, we're doing lemons, we're doing oranges, we're doing blood oranges and we're doing dragon fruit. All of our citrus are organic, they're sourced locally, and this is a really good way to help the channel. The garnishes are made in small batches, they're essentially made to order, and although we're starting with, you know, the usual suspects, the really simple lemon, lime, orange, blood orange, we hope to expand into some less common, harder to get fruits, and then on top of that, we'll have some seasonal offerings for you guys. So if you guys have any suggestions for things you'd like to see, definitely let us know. So head to the shop and no coupon code needed because they're amazingly priced and it helps the channel. The Colonial Ties is a riff on the American Trilogy, another milk and honey cocktail. And what I usually say about the American Trilogy is that it represents the history of American distillation in a glass. You've got rye whiskey, the very first American whiskey. You've got Applejack, the very first American distilled spirit. You've got brown sugar that represents the sugar trade with the Caribbean. And in that same vein, the ingredients in the Colonial Ties really furthers that story of Colonial America. So the first thing we're gonna do is rinse a glass with absinthe. I like to do it with an atomizer to get a nice even coat. Next, we're gonna add one rough cut sugar cube because that's what you'd have in colonial times. And then four dashes of orange bitters. Just a splash of soda water. And we're gonna muddle this into a paste. And you wanna make sure that you muddle it really well so that you dissolve some of the sugar and kind of make a very rich, simple syrup but that you still retain a little of its graininess. One ounce of rye whiskey. I like using this 100 proof rye because it's gonna stand up really well Jamaican rum funk. And one ounce of Jamaican rum. So next we're gonna take a big rock of ice. We wanna make sure that it tempers so that it doesn't crack in the cocktail. Give it a stir. We wanna make sure to lift that ice up so you kind of whoosh the sugar underneath it to help dissolve a bit of it as well. And then next we're gonna take a nice orange twist here and we're gonna zest it over the drink like so distributing those oils. I like to hold it high, because if you hold it high, the more bitter elements will fall away and the lighter, sweeter ones will go on the cocktail. We're gonna clean this peel up to make it nice and presentable as well. There you go. Cheers. It's just so well balanced. Right up front, you have the Jamaican rum, you have those yeasty, bready, and then spicy notes from the rye whiskey, which I know that yeasty isn't like a very wonderful way to describe something. Most people don't want things to be yeasty. If your bread is yeasty, it's a bad thing. When your rye is yeasty, it's a good thing. It has this dry spice to it, but then it also has this, I used to describe it as maltiness. Then I thought that people would get kind of confused because there is like malt barley inside, there's malted barley inside whiskey a lot of the time, American whiskey. So it's not barley-ish. It's like this yeasty kind of flavor flavor uh, profile, which I really enjoy. And then you just couple that with the Jamaican rum funk, and then you get all of the anise notes from the absinthe, and it's just, mwah. it is a wonderful cocktail. There it is, Colonial Ties.